is a role-playing game where you and your friends come together, you can play in any world you choose, you create your characters, and then together you decide what kind of story you're gonna have. So the idea would be you've just read a book, you can't get it out of your head, now you can go and play your own story adventure in the world of that book that you're directing within the rules and the canon that the author has set and confirmed with a generative AI narrator. The way it works is that you come in, you choose the world you want to play in. Right now we have The Wizard of Oz, many more exciting worlds to come. You create your character, you decide the kind of adventure you're going to have by playing out of your deck of story cards. And then the system creates a unique story adventure for you. And then you can do anything you want. It takes a lot of the joys of playing a tabletop role-playing game and brings them into a digital format. And as you play, you see a graphic novel come together dynamically based on what you choose to do and how the world and the story reacts to you. It's like an improv show where you, even though you might play the same cards, you get a different, unique story every time. So you throw words in, it comes up, up with uh, suggested things you might do, you pick something, and then it reacts to you. And then along with our AI narrator who plays the role of, say, the game master, you can go on any adventure you want and you can do anything. And the system and the story will continue based on your choices. When you play on Hidden Door, you're playing with your friends. And we were really inspired by a lot of the joys of playing tabletop role-playing games together where, you know, someone else has an idea, you build on that idea, together you roll your dice, you try something, and maybe it works and it's amazing and maybe it fails and that can be equally amazing and still give you a really good story to tell. And what we're doing is bringing that joy into a computer game where you have an AI narrator facilitating some of that. But a lot of the fun is really just that you're there with your friends, you're trying cool, crazy stuff, you feel awesome, uh, and whatever happens, it happens because of what you chose to do. At Hidden Door, we are working with authors and folks who make some really exciting TV shows and other media to bring those worlds into the platform. And the system supports anything fictional. So it does do science fiction, it does do fantasy, it does, you know, period romance, um, which you can think of as more relationship-based gameplay in addition to sort of your standard action-based gameplay um, or sort of dungeon crawl-based storytelling. Um, all of this stuff is supported by the engine. So we do allow our creators to set rules for the way that their worlds and their characters show up. So they can tell us this character can never die, that character will never fall in love. And we think it's really important because it gives the creators a way to be confident that their worlds and their stories are being told the way they envisioned it. And it gives our players the confidence and the consistency that they're playing in the world they're already familiar with. Like it will feel like what they expect it to feel like. I mean, first at Hidden Door, we're fans, and we think of this as a new way to be a fan of a creation you love. And so we collaborate with creators by working with them directly, licensing their content, they get paid for it. Um, and then bringing that to their fans um, in a new and interesting way. While there may be a million Star Wars games in the world, if you were playing one on Hidden Door, because of our AI narrator and the story engine, the choices you make matter. So when you decide that you want to become, say, the governor of Tatooine, you can do that. And the world changes around you and your character. You are able to meaningfully alter the plot of the entire world in a way that was never pre-written or pre-scripted. There's no limit to the number of characters you might encounter, the locations, or the stories you can tell in Hidden Door. When you play a Hidden Door game, you can win in the same way you would win in a tabletop role-playing game. So the campaign can go on and on, but each episode of it, each story within it, is something where, yeah, you can win big or you can lose. 
Um, there is death. There is all of the challenge of being in a game where there are goals and there are things you can try to do. And when you succeed at those, you do change the world that you're in and the world around you. Um, and when you fail, usually it's, it's a pretty funny experience. Campaigns in Hidden Door can run for as long as you want to play them. And we find people get really attached to their characters and they want to keep evolving those characters, keep seeing them grow and learn new things and gain new abilities. Um, the AI will never run out of content. You can keep going in your version of the world with your characters and see where they end up. So at Hidden Door, it's very possible to create content for different age ranges, and there are a couple ways we do it. One is that if an author had a certain set of, of plots that might happen or shouldn't happen, they can, can control that when they're creating their world. And then at playtime, because we use this trick where everything is structured in the game engine and then it's rendered into text and art right before you see it, we can actually render it at different complexity levels of English, in different words for different characters, even in different languages. Uh, so there are several ways that you can make content for different audiences, different age levels, different levels of appropriateness. Most of the folks playing on Hidden Door right now are 18 plus, they're fans of books and movies and people who really like tabletop games and people who like video games. But we did architect the system not just to be controllable for content, but to be safe um, for kids as young as nine. So right now, most of our players are adults, but someday we might welcome younger players as well. So Hidden Door's story engine is something unique. It's something we built ourselves and we've really tuned it for being able to tell compelling stories with familiar story arcs. Simply, we use the notion of tropes. These are things like a bar brawl, which can happen in almost any fictional world you can imagine, like one in the cantina in Star Wars. Things we're familiar with. So if you've been a fan of, of say, like fantasy, you will understand the tropes of the genre. You will know there's usually a party, there's usually a warrior, there's usually a healer. Um, people play these different roles and different kinds of things happen. And you'll know that Say if you're you know, in a love triangle, it's probably gonna play out this way. And this is one of the great, like cool things about this kind of storytelling that we've built into the engine, because it means that we can take all of the things you already expect and build them into the stories, and then for each particular story, change it in a way that is really meaningful. Um, and this is what we think great writers do too, is they're building on the work of the writers that have come before, um, and so are we. And so we take these tropes and we combinatorially bring them together with whatever makes the most sense in the story at that moment. So at every turn of the game, while it is expressed in, you'll see it in words and you'll see art that's dynamically generated, there's actually a database under there that also allows us to do things like physics simulations, like what happens if you do light that thing on fire? And then you'll see the story come out the other side from your character's perspective. Um, in text and art that's all made just right at that moment. And the way we do it is uh, to use a bunch of little uh, vector art things that mostly our art director has created ahead of time that is associated with language. And then the time we need a scene, right at the time you're playing the game, it composes the scene out of those bits of pre-made art. You can think about it like, a bunch of paper dolls for characters and items and locations that get pulled together based on the words in the scene. And what this lets us do is that if you're playing in say like the goth cafe in you know the moon, we can make the art for that because all of those pieces exist and they can be assembled dynamically. And it also means that every hidden door game has this really cool art style which is consistent and characters show up the same way from here to there. Um, so it ends up being a really cool effect. In Hidden Door, we use 
an AI narrator because we want to bring a lot of the joys of playing with, say, a human dungeon master to a different format. This is not a replacement. It's just a different way to get into that kind of experience where you don't need to have a friend who can invest all of that time. You don't need to buy books. You don't need to learn a whole complex set of rules. It's a different game. It has a very light rule set. It has a language-based interface. You can just come and play whenever. So we think of it as something that people who like that kind of storytelling will do also. It's not a replacement for playing in person with your friends. It also allows you to play alone. So you can play by yourself with the AI narrator, which is something that is really hard to do otherwise. Door, you don't just type text. It's not a it's not a text editor. It's not a writing tool. What you do is say you read the story. You're like, cool. This is what I want my character to do. And you throw some words or emoji into a box, and the system is creating potential sentences for what you might do. And the way it does that is by saying, what do we think is going to happen next? And then what would be really cool and weird that we can offer? We do a lot of wordplay. So if you put the word punch in there, it's going to be like, cool, I punch bad guy. But also, I feel punchy. I look for fruit punch. You know, it likes to really give you the optionality to explore a bunch of different kinds of things you might do. And then when you submit that action, the system says, cool. This is what you're doing. What does that actually mean in terms of impacting the game simulation in the world? And then how does the world react to you? How do the NPCs react? And we do a lot of um, creating the, the illusion of storytelling through taking whatever the player may do and drawing it into the story. So if you were to you know, offend someone in the last story, and the story engine says, cool, we need an enemy to show up here and yell at you. Like, that's the person who's going to show up. Um, so your actions really do have a ton of impact on how the stories come together over time. And they're really meaningful in driving your character in the world over time as well. Our AI system at Hidden Door is something we've built. Um, we have benefited from a lot of the work in the open source AI and machine learning community. We've built a bunch of our own models on our own story data. Um, and we've built a bunch of models that get composed together. So we have one that particularly thinks about plots, and we have one that thinks about for this character, in this moment, in this story, do they need to roll a die, and, and what's the challenge of this action they're trying to take? And we compose all that stuff together in a really unique uh, story engine that's just ours. And if you think about what chat GPT and GPT-4 are great at, they're trained on modern American English, they know a lot about the world, but if you're in a fictional story, you should not be able to ask a character like who's the president of the United States and have someone say Joe Biden, right? Like that breaks your consistency and your immersion in that world. So we have built our own story AI engine and it's based on this notion of tropes under the hood. Um, but it's something that I think is a little bit unique in that it allows us to tell these really compelling fictional stories. It allows us to know at every turn of the game what the status of each character, each location, um, each relationship is in a way that's both uh, computable and also something we can understand in language. And it lets us um, really create these very immersive story experiences that are different than what you would see if you were just chatting with something like ChatGPT. Whenever you're building an AI system, it's really important to think about how to do it ethically. And that means a bunch of different things. It means, is your data sourced ethically? Is your system magnify biases in the underlying data? Are you accounting for that? Are you controlling for that? Are you making sure there are levers in your product where people who might experience something can report it? We've been very thoughtful about this for a very long time at Hidden Door. Um, and we do our best to be very clear, transparent, to have ethically sourced data, to think about our player experience and make sure that they are safe and that they are always able to see themselves safely reflected in the stories that are being told. We work with writers. We want writers to get paid. We see what we do as a way of giving writers access to the technology that takes the work they've already done, all of that world building, all of that imagining, all of that writing 
and then gives them another way to share that with their fans where they get paid more for the work they've already done. We're really excited to work with writers. And personally, I know this is controversial, but I don't think AI is innately evil. I think what we're arguing about is who gets to benefit. And we really want to see the writers, the creators benefit from it. Um, and that's why we're doing this the way we're doing it. So Kidinder, we think that everybody, no matter who they are and what perspective they have, should be able to see themselves in a story and be able to tell the stories that are important to them. But this means being able to tell stories that are not just sort of the, you know, standard Western canon in one form of story. Uh, it means being able to tell diverse stories. It means being able to be diverse characters who have diverse adventures and, you know, are experiencing these fictional worlds in a, a way that is equal, that is fair, um, that is fun for everybody, no matter who they are. Um, and you'll see that today in our character creation experience. <laughs> you can be anyone, any pronouns, um, and that is honored throughout the story system. But much broader than that, we're thinking a lot about how we can be fans of things that everybody is a fan of, but you can also be a fan of things that maybe only you and a few people are a fan of. And one of the real opportunities of something like Hidden Door is that we can bring those stories forward too. And we can offer and respect those diverse perspectives and diverse interests in storytelling. Today you can play Hidden Door anywhere you can access the web. Um, so you can play on desktop, you can play on your mobile device, you can play on a tablet.